Hello. So um, contrary to what all of the corporate giants would have you believe, Halloween is within the week and not Christmas, um, although the Christmas story was fantastic. Um, so I'm going to wear my mask. It makes me feel better. Um, this is my first time telling a story. Yay! All right, so this is weird. When I was younger, um, my family and I would always go up to the Poconos. We had family friends who had a cabin, and uh, we were lucky enough to have them let us borrow it for the weekend. So it was my dad's side of the family, and we would all go up for the entire weekend. And I remember this one time in fifth grade, my best friend and I, it was the first time I had gotten to bring a friend with me. This was a big deal, because up until then, I was just like one of the kids. So I got to bring my friend with me, and we were kind of in that phase where we were like, we didn't think anything of the rest of the world, and it was kind of just us. So this cabin was on a lake. We were really lucky. Um, so the first thing we did when we got there was we ran outside to the lake, and we skipped some rocks, and we screamed, and we were like, is anybody out here? And we thought we were like really badasses. Um, we weren't, but it took about 20 seconds and someone was like, yeah, we're here. And we freaked out. <laughs> so for the rest of the weekend, you know, instead of like actually having a good time with my family and eating spaghetti dinners, we were outside on the lake yelling at this person across the lake that we had never met, had no idea who they were. We didn't exchange names until the last day. And we had a very serious conversation about this at like 11 o'clock at night, which was late. We were like, maybe we should like meet them. <laughs> so Sunday rolled up. We went out to the lake. And we were like, what's your name? And this guy replied, and he was like, Seymour. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, OK. Um, Seymour what? <laughs> Seymour butts. <laughs> so you know, we were dumb. Um, <laughs> my mom how we were up at the cabin with my dad's family and my dad and we met this guy named Seymour Butts and he was like way cool and she was like mm, that's interesting and then my dad comes in with this shit eating grin on his face and was like so your uncle and I drove across the lake and we sort of like figured out that you were yelling to some strangers out there and so we drove across the lake and pretended to be Seymour Butts because, you know, it's really dumb to talk to strangers. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, my dad was like really into teaching us lessons and he was kind of a smart ass about doing it. Uh, it was a lesson well learned. <laughs> Never did that again. Um, he was like, you know, he came up to my room later because I was really offended and I was like so embarrassed. And he was like, you know, this is for your own good. Like, this is, as a parent, this is what I do for you. We teach you lessons. So fast forward, like, 16 years later. This takes a dark turn. I'm really sorry. Um, my dad uh, was diagnosed with uh, Lewy body disease when I was mm, 26, 27. And then shortly after that, he was diagnosed with stage 4 prostate cancer, which is, like, not good. Um, so he and I were really close. Um, I have two younger sisters, and we're just we're a really close family. Um, but things got a little a little touchy for a while. Um, towards the end, he started hallucinating a little bit, and I remember this one moment. It was late at night, and it was getting close to Christmas, and he was having this like crazy hallucination. He was like, "I need you to come in here," you know. He was. Kind of almost bedridden at the, at the time. He was like, I need you to come in here. Uh, you gotta help me like push this stuff up the mountain and we gotta like unload this truck. 
and we got to do all this by like noon, and it was midnight, so you know, not noon. Um, but I played along because that's what you do, and I loved him. So we did it, and we got everything off the truck, and um, my now husband, Aaron, was uh, over there with me. I called him, and I was like, I need you to come over here. I don't know what to do right now. I'm by myself, and my dad was hallucinating. So he came over, and we were um, trying to get him, help him to the bathroom. And um, we stopped in the kitchen. My dad was like a 20-year smoker. Um, so when we got to the kitchen, he did what he normally did, and he started like patting his breast pocket, like where his pocket should have been, and he was looking for his cigarettes, I could tell. Um, and he like went to reach for one, and he pulled one out of his pocket, they weren't there, mind you, pulled one out of his pocket, held it up to his mouth, and like started going like this. And then he was like getting a little confused, I could tell, I was like, you know, Dad, you don't have a cigarette right now. He's like, well, can you get me one? And I was like, Mom would shit her pants. No, I can't get you one. Also, like, you've come this far. He stopped smoking when he figured out he had cancer. So I was like, no, I can't get you one, but I also can't tell you that. So I pretended to pull one out of my mom's pack of cigarettes, pretend lit it, handed it to him, and he, stand, he stood there in the kitchen, and he was like, you know, had the whole stance and everything, and like held it to his mouth, and puffed, and like held it away for a few minutes, because that's what he did. And he finished it. He finished it, you know, in like five to 10 minutes, which is exactly how long it takes you to finish a cigarette. And it was perfect. He was like, man. I missed cigarettes. <laughs> and I was like, I bet you did, Dad. That's awesome. <laughs> you finished the hell out of that cigarette. Um, and I just remembered this time in my life where my dad would teach me lessons, and he would always do what was best for me. And it was this one instance in which I was able to do something that was best for my dad. Thanks so much.